Uh, the message I'm about to share now is in respite to the message I uploaded uh, two nights ago. That was on Wednesday, uh, day before yesterday. So after I finished uploading that message, as I was lying down to uh, to sleep, then suddenly the Holy Spirit bring back to my memory uh, the things I was supposed to state in that message that would have helped the body of Christ. I did not say it. I didn't say it. Uh, and I started feeling very bad throughout that night until yesterday, Thursday I was still feeling the same all through and this morning I resolved within me that I was going to share this message who knows, it might help somebody alongside with the one I have shared already so there are things God showed me that I was supposed to mention uh, concerning alongside the rebuke but I didn't mention them. So I am here to talk about them this morning. I pray God of heaven will help somebody to understand this message and the purpose of it uh, will not be in vain in the name of Jesus Christ. Among the rebuke that God was giving me uh, concerning a single brother and uh, not to come alone to visit me or visit a sister who stays alone or a brother who stays alone, the sister shouldn't come single to visit that person is what uh, I'm about to say now. So there was this brother uh, who belongs to one movement here in Nigeria, him and the wife, but then I was also part of the movement. Uh, the brother was having an office very close to me, to where I was staying. Where I was staying wasn't far from the brother's office where he's working. So many times the brother would just take break from the office. He's always coming to stay with me in my house. So sometimes when he come, two of us would just sit down, we'll gist, we'll gist, we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk. We'll say a lot of things. And the brother will not go. We'll just sit down quiet and be looking at me and be smiling. I don't know if he's thinking something in his mind or not. Only God knows. And where I was living is kind of like open place. It's an upstate that uh, is so uh, uh, exposed uh, to the highway and to both sides of the road that if you're passing you can easily sight somebody who is climbing upstairs there and this same upstairs is a place where I'm so popular there because I sometimes come with my megaphone stand there and preach the gospel so people within the timber market area they know me so anybody going up there people see they will know this person is going at a sister K place. People know it's not a hidden place. So this brother keep on coming, keep on coming, and I don't know who is watching this brother. So I started having uh, a dream about this brother. Uh, there was a time I saw the wife of this brother. Uh, we used to go out for evangelism together, myself, the brother, and the wife. So there was a day I had a dream. In this dream, I saw that I was trying to climb a bike. Then the sister started shouting. The sister started shouting at me and embarrassing me before uh, some other sisters in this movement. And this was what she was saying. Sister Kate, your husband snatcher. You have snatched my husband. She was shouting and embarrassing me. And I was so ashamed as I was hearing her talking. I was so uncomfortable. People were looking at me on the road. I didn't know what to do. I just climbed the bike and I ran away. I asked the bike man to move on with me and he left. So when I wake up, I was like, what is going on? Why is the sister embarrassing me uh, in my dream? Am I sleeping with the husband? Am I going out with the husband? Or is it because the husband is close to me? Uh, the wife is thinking like this? Or is that what the wife is thinking about? That God is showing me in my dream? I was not asking myself so many questions. I wasn't comfortable. Then again, there was a day, the wife, I went to visit them, and I had the wife, because we became so close. The brother is so fond of me, that as he keep on coming to me always, sometimes the wife, uh, it's like the wife, sometimes the wife maybe may be aware of it. As the brother keep on coming, the wife sees the brother. So the, the wife knew that I am close uh, to the husband and the husband is close to me in fact I'm more closer to the husband than the wife because most time I call the husband the wife will be there hearing us 
I'm talking with the husband and the husband calls me always and talk with me while the wife is there. And when we finish talking, I want to ask the husband, please, how is your wife? Greet your wife for me. So the wife was hearing. Uh, it's like the wife was not comfortable. Though I can't speak the wife mind, but this was what I was perceiving because there was a day the wife and the husband had a misunderstanding. So when I went to their house, the wife told me this. She said that I'm not bothered, that I want to leave this man. Let him go and marry whoever he wants. Me, I'm not disturbing him. If he wants to marry anybody, I am. I, I, I allow him. He's free. He's free to marry whoever he wants. I don't know why she was saying this. Maybe to hear something from me. But she's thinking that the husband is in love with me. I don't know. So we were so close that I don't know what to say. But to me, in my heart, I wasn't having any amorous uh, feeling for the man. I was not having any hard feeling. I was just taking him like a brother that is nice, that is caring uh, to me. That was all I knew about this brother. So I don't know if his mind is different. But when the wife began to make this comment, the thing uh, baffles me like seriously. Then again, and I had another brother in deeper life that used to come to me. That one like coming in the night. That one comes in the night. He will come and stay with me. He's married. He has a wife in the house. He has chased his first wife away. I had another second wife before he gave his life to Christ. And now he's a deeper life member. So this brother too is one of coming to me. That one always come in the night. And when he comes, he will come. The first thing he will ask me is what the revelation God gave me. I'm interested in fact, Sister Kate. You are a very special person uh, in this place. I uh, like staying with you. I like hearing you. You encourage me. So we'll start talking about my revelation. I'll be sharing to him along the line. Uh, from that revelation, sometime we'll enter my past life. I'll be discussing about my past, you know, all those things. We'll be discussing so many things, you know, in the course of discussion, I don't know. So the sometimes the brother will be telling me, Ah, Sister Kate, you make a good wife. Ah, Sister Kate, oh, you make a good wife. You know, the brother will just be telling me things like that. Uh, you know, we started discussing, you know, there are things we are not even supposed to talk carnally. We'll be going carnal, you understand? So there was a day and I started having a dream about this brother. There was a dream I had about him that I saw him. He was caressing me in the dream. So I began to feel like, is this brother thinking uh, that aspect about me? That is someone who chased the first wife away, marry uh, the second woman in this, in, in this house before he knew God, now he's a deep member. So I was not like, is this brother thinking that part? Is that why I'm dreaming about him like this? So apart from several other brothers who will always pass and say, Sister Kate, I feel like coming to see you. Like I mentioned in the first video, uh, that God started rebuking me, showing me that a single brother is not supposed to come to my house. So this brother was coming. Then one evening I was there. The brother now came to me one night. One evening he rushed to my house. He came, he wasn't happy. I said, ah, brother, what is it? He said, eh, my zona leader went and reported him. Uh, to our pastor. My sooner leader went and reported him to our pastor. That sister Kate, I will not be coming to your house again. I will not be coming to your house again. I said, what happened? Who, who, why would they report you? That you did what? He said, they say me I used to come to your house. Maybe now I'm sleeping with you. This and this, this and that. I said, what? Why would they say a thing like that? You have never slept with me and I can never sleep with any man. So, why would they tell you a thing like that? I was so angry. I said, brother, don't mind them. Don't mind them. They are not keeping me company. You that you are always coming to stay with me, keep me company. And now they are, they are jealous. They want to put us on that. So I was not happy at all. I went and asked my pastor. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with what they did. So that put me off from going to church because I was so angry that these people hate me. Why would they go telling my pastor that uh, this brother is coming to my house, that this brother should not be coming again, they stop him from coming. Uh, they are suspecting us. So I was so angry, I stopped going to church. For some time, I stopped going to church. And I ran to one other church. I just went and started going to one other church on my own. When I went, the pastor is also a member of this movement. And the pastor told me, I should not continue in deeper life. I should come to his church. So I was happy, and I got not to worship in this pastor's church for like one month, two weeks. 
So I had a dream. In this dream, I saw myself back in the deeper life district where I was worshipping before with this same brother. So in that dream, I saw the brother standing afar. Other people were sitting there. He was standing far by the door side. Then me too, I was standing by another side like this, like the far right like this in the church. So I went to the brother. I told the brother in that dream, I said, see, it's like these people don't like us. It's like these people in this church, they don't like two of us. Please, I want us to leave this church. Let's go to Watchman uh, Charismatic. Jesus said, Watchman is his church. Or oh, let's go to Redeem. So we were like contemplating in that dream. Two of us were like contemplating. I was telling him, if we should leave the church and go to this place, these two churches I mentioned. So the brother accepted and he followed me. So a little while, when two of us were like running from Deeper Life Church, when we got outside the compound of the church, we were running, we were not even walking, we were running to leave the church, both of us, because they stopped him from coming to me, uh, suspecting that he may be sleeping with me. So as we were running outside the church, we are trying to leave Deeper Life Church, suddenly I heard a voice that called on me. So what I did, I just looked up towards where the voice was. As I did like this, Ah, I saw the Lord Jesus. It was just like somebody standing on the upstairs looking down. I saw only his face like this. And he was talking to me, which I told people, his face was like bloody like this. His face was like bloody. So he was talking to me mouth to mouth, eye to eye. And he was speaking to me. I was looking at him directly like this. So he told me that I should go back to the church. That the doctrine of the church, he like it. That what they told me, uh, that that brother, maybe this is the reason why God really wants me to share this message uh, to you people. He said, what they told me, that that brother should not be coming to my place, that I am staying single, that he's also good, that he like it. This is Jesus speaking to me, mouth to mouth, eye to eye, face to face. He was not talking to me in spirit that I was hearing only his voice, but I was hearing the Lord, watching him face to face, speaking to me face to face, mouth to mouth. I was looking at him as he's talking, his mouth was going up, his eyes was looking at my eye, eye to eye, and I was hearing the Lord and I was watching him very clear the way he was looking at me as he was talking. And he told me that what they told me that that brother should not be coming to my house that I am staying single, um, a single sister staying alone, that he like it, that is good. So God used that to encourage me that I should not go away, I should continue to stay in deeper life. And again, to show me that he hates uh, this issue. Why God was putting this press in me to share this message? Because many of you must have heard that one I shared two days ago. You may not take it serious. You may not know, you may not know that Jesus himself appeared to me in this matter. And he is not happy that uh, we live a careless life where brothers can visit a sister uh, without taking precaution, without minding whether people are looking at you, without minding what God will say. As a single sister, God is jealous over us. Or even anybody, God is jealous. Like I said earlier in the first video that our God is a jealous God. He said in Isaiah 42 verse 8 that I will not share my glory with another. So when the Lord was speaking to me, I saw blood all over his face. As he was talking, his face was bloody. So when I wake up in this revelation, uh, immediately when he finished talking, I ran back. I just woke up. So as I woke up, I was afraid. I said, God, hey. That means this thing is a serious matter that God even appeared to me and is telling me about it. So when I discuss this very revelation to people, how I saw Jesus speaking to me from the cloud above in heaven and he was talking and I was seeing his face. Uh, you know, in the spirit, there's a way. Even the cloud, you may think it's far. But when God was speaking to me, it wasn't far. It was just like you're standing up and looking at somebody that the cloud became close and the face of the Lord was close looking at me and I was seeing his face very clear. I was seeing him. I was hearing his voice clear, loud and clear, face to face, mouth to mouth. Jesus was speaking to me. So, 
when I share to people and I told them about the mystery, about the blood on his face when he's talking, uh, there was a sister that told me uh, that uh, uh, when God is angry, you see blood in his face like that. But that when he's not happy, sometimes blood can still be dropping from the wound on his hand. You will see blood dropping, which I believe that is true. That God wasn't happy that I, Sister Kate, or John, that he himself, converted by himself, no deeper life preached to me, nobody preached and bring me to deeper life and bring me to repentance that God himself encountered me because of the truth, simple truth that my Zona leader uh, told me. I got angry with him and God himself was not happy that I want to run away. So that was why his face was with blood when he was talking with me. So that was what I understand, which is true, 100% true, that when God is angry, when he appeared to you, and he's talking, blood will be coming out of him. So I pray, I don't know how many times uh, that we, or you listen to me now, or me myself, has been making God to bleed through his bleeding side, or bleed through his body, because when God is angry, he's dropping blood from his body. That blood is shed for us on the cross. When we make him angry, we pierce him, and blood comes out of his body. I pray the Lord will help us not to make him angry, not to make him bleed over our 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 attitude, our disobedience anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. So this was what happened concerning this rebuke that I didn't mention in the first video that I decided to speak on it today because the Holy Spirit was dealing with me and I was feeling very bad. I was feeling really great. You know, each and every one of us as we serve God, we know uh, how God deals with us. Again, to add, I want to also tell you uh, one of the revelations that I have uh, that I was tormented in hellfire. That was my last uh, experience in hell that I had not long ago. I was tormented in hellfire and I was surprised why I was in hell again. I said, why will I be in hell? And the department I was kept in this hellfire was a department of adultery and fornication. And I saw demon torturing me and they were tormenting me seriously and I was crying and I see it in that in that very uh, revelation of hell fire as I was in hell being tormented I was crying and I was saying this I say but I no longer commit fornication since I gave my life to Jesus I am no more committing for I have never committed fornication since I I gave my life to the Lord I haven't slept with any man till today why am I being tormented in the department of fornication? Why am I here in the department of fornication and adultery? I was crying and I was asking myself, but no answer was given to me. I was really, really tormented. I'm telling you, hell is not a good place to experience because each time I experience hell, I feel sad. I don't like it at all. And I don't want to end there because of carelessness. I don't want to end in hell. I don't want to end in hell. I have never been, I have never slept with any man since I gave my life to Jesus. Neither any man crossed his leg on my lap, neither any man touched my breast or any of my sensual parts. No man has ever touched me since I repented and gave my life to Christ. I have been like this till today. I have preserved my body. I have even made a vow with my mouth to God and I say to him the Lord, the day I sleep with a man, that is not my husband, strike me dead that very day. And the day any man raped me, let that man too be struck dead, be struck dead. So I, I made this covenant on myself. And this is what I said. The Lord God is hearing me loud and clear. This thing I'm saying before the whole world today. I made this covenant and that has kept me strong today that I have never gone into the scene of fornication or rising and falling like many believers have been doing. So I was so surprised seeing myself being tormented in hell uh, because of fornication and adultery and I was in that department. So as I keep on asking on and on, I say, why am I here being tormented in the department of adultery and fornication? And I was not able to get the answer. So I was devil were torturing me and they were looking at me seriously and I saw other women as well. Those women were Christians. 
they were holy people and I saw that they were born again Christian. I was surprised. Why are they also here for fornication and adultery? Beloving Christ, many of us, we are on the narrow way, but we are committing adultery. We are committing fornication, but we never knew. Look at it in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 28. The Bible says that who he that looketh at a woman lustfully, even without touching the woman's body, has committed adultery with that woman. Has committed adultery with that woman. Do you know how you commit fornication? The lustful clothes that you put on, the things that are seductive that you are wearing, is putting loss in the heart of man. Bringing a single brother to come and stay with you in your house and you're discussing that brother you have put loss in his heart. As you're lying down, he's watching you and his body is doing something but you may not understand. And that brother that I told you that have been coming to me that the office is just close to me. You don't know how many times I put him into loss. As he's coming, the way position, I lie on the bed and you're sitting down watching. You don't know what it must have done to his, to his spirit mind. You may not understand. This is the reason why I have been judged and condemned for adultery and fornication. Many of you listening to me now, you have been doing the same. You have been putting many brothers into adultery and fornication, even without them expressing their mind to you, even without them telling you what their heart is thinking or what their heart is saying. They must have committed this sacrilege. They must have committed this abomination with, with their heart. And God is going to judge them because by the scripture of God, we will all be judged. Are you getting me, brothers and sisters? In that message I uploaded there before yesterday, there was a sister that shared her testimony uh, there in the comment section that she used to wear supergative, that one morning she wore supergative or one evening, I can't remember, that uh, a brother or somebody, a neighbor, knocked on her door, came into the house to charge his phone. Uh, in their house, why she was wearing the spaghetti? Do you know that that brother immediately stares at this woman with the spaghetti she was wearing, even though she's a married woman with children? The brother is melting in his heart, and this is that say the Holy Spirit started talking to her immediately, and this was what the Holy Spirit said to her that you are exposing your naked body. So uh, the sister now responded, whether waiting, you know, the Holy Spirit told her that she's. Uh, exposing her body. You see, there are things we believers we are not supposed to wear. There are clothes we are not supposed to wear. All this short thing we put on, some of us still wear short thing even till now. We'll tell you, no, it doesn't matter. I'm in the house. You wear handless, people are looking at your armpits. You don't know men are weaker vessels. There are things they see. They are moved and they are carried away with those things they see. So, these are things we need to know. We need to be careful before it will be too late so many of us will be moving here it may be a pastor it may be a bishop it may be a born again christian an usher evangelist and whoever you have never defied your body uh, since you gave your life to jesus but you may be surprised that you are judged for adultery and fornication take heed to this warning take heed to this warning this is all I have to say. This message is part of the last message I uploaded. All born again must hear this before it is late. All born again must know these two things before it is late. Beloved, take heed. Check yourself whether you are still standing or you are falling already. Do not put laws in the heart of men. Know the things you wear. Know the way you move. Mind the clothes you wear if they are exposing your body. If they are exposing any of your shape. Tight fitted clothes, I told you, is a sin before God. Some of us, some men, uh, they don't really look at uh, uh, whether you put makeup. They just look at you, uh, your shape alone. They are moved by it. Please, let us be cautious. God is not tired of teaching us. We will not be tired of learning. But let us take heed, not only hearing and not being the doer. James chapter 1 verse 22 said, Do not only be the hearer of the word of God, but also be the doer of it. As we take heed to his warning, I pray the Lord of us.
In Jesus' name.